welcome to my channel and I'm not in my shop but this is where I keep my tools uh, my working tools and if you've seen all of my videos you've seen a lot of the, uh, the tools that I been showing and they come out of this little garage that I built it's kind of a storage type of thing it's where I keep the tools that I take to work but this little series I'm going to make is about the radial arm saw and it has to do with Craftsman uh, I happen to have the one you're looking at is uh, the series 197 this happens to be the 250 right here comes with the legs and they also made uh, the 210 they came with like a little cabinet but uh, I have three of these uh, the first one I bought in the early 80s is in my shop uh, then I got this one I do uh, a lot of things with it I'll show you later on what I usually use this one for and then I have another one that I usually take to work with me. And we'll probably be showing that one, but it's all about this one here. And I'm going to be talking about how safe they really are. And I want to start with uh, with the guard. It came with this guard. It's a two, two and a half horsepower. And the reason or the way it works just make believe that he is a blade this is how the blade will go if you eventually what you do is you rotate the front just to make sure that it's just above your workpiece and you lock that in and then in the back what they call the claws you bring down and you set this up somewhere around here and you can see the little claws that grab and also the little wheel it's the little wheel there and that was that's what keeps the cut or the kerf open as you go by. So here goes your workpiece. This keeps it from lifting. If it ever does happen. And then when it goes through the cut. And if there's ever a kickback for whatever reason. It won't go anywhere. Um, I noted the DeWaltz. They talk about the DeWaltz. I will never own one of those. Uh, you could give me one for free. I will not use it. Uh, they were not meant to be for a small shop. Those are commercial. That if I had a mill or something like that, I will use uh, an apparatus like that. It's tremendous. They're big, heavy. You can't move them afterward. These machines are very portable. I carry these, put them in my truck, take them to work on some of the jobs. But uh, this is, they are very safe. And this is the way this one was made. Uh, it was like in the late late uh, 80s is when I got this one. And this is the way it came. What happened was, I guess, there was a lot of stupid people out there using these. And they don't, uh, <laughs> it's not hard to believe, but a lot of the videos that I see, I can see why people are getting hurt. They just, especially now, they, you could pick these up for nothing and then just take them to the shop and they start cutting without calibrating this stupid machine. And, 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 it's, and it doesn't take long, actually, if you want to really operate this safely. Everybody's afraid of ripping, and I can see why. Anyway, all of these videos uh, is going to be about this machine. Uh, I'm going to set this up because uh, it, it, after the years, it gets hard to bring this up and down. And the way to do that is to losing 
I'll go through this later. And what that does is once you do that, your calibration is off. So you kind of have to start from scratch. And that's what I'm going to do. This video right now is about, about the guard. Because what happened after these stupid people cutting their fingers, craftsmen had to come up with something. And I wind up getting this kit that uh, I have. I haven't opened up the box yet. I've had it more than 10 years. And I might want to use the table. No idea which table they're giving me. Uh, see, I got the table right over here. Uh, see, I got the table. Which I, I want to open up just to see what kind of table they're giving me. Because I kind of like this one. It's one inch. And if, uh, and if that one is one inch, I think what I will do is I will use it for that machine that I have over there that I bought this back in the 90s. Well, let's stay with this machine right now. And I'm going to show you the guard that eventually was sent to replace this one. If you notice, the markings on these guards, there's the original. If you don't see this on those machine, it's because they've been replaced. And that's what happens, you lose that. Because eventually, what you might be getting, you end up getting this guy. And I have to say that this is very safe. I kinda I like some of the features that they made with this one. Let me put this on. around the lights in this video with the camera okay still have battery so this is what comes with it it comes like this of course it's got the uh, uh, the uh, where where the chips get uh, thrown out and it's in the back that was a big improvement from this. Uh, this was stupid. But that's how they came. It's about the only thing wrong with this one was this. And of course, you had to move the whole head down, like I showed before. With this one, you don't have to. So they fixed this, which is in the back now. Of course, they had this guard, which this is. A true guard actually because by having this you cannot feed the wrong way you can't by having that also I'll show later that when you have it on the uh, cross cut mode this should stay behind the fence and that will not allow the machine to come forward because of this little cut on this guard. And the way you, uh, with the handle, you bring this up. And another thing they did with this, of course you lose everything. So you can tell it's been uh, replaced on this machine. Is instead of bringing the whole head down or ripping, what they have is, It should have been like this, actually. It should have been like that. So what you do is, now they have this that comes down. Let me see if I can do this without. So you can see. And you hold it there. And there it is. It 
this piece came down, I don't have to move this like before. That was a great improvement. And in the back, they also changed it a little bit because I don't have the wheel now. Now, this claw in the back is two pieces where I have the blade, the uh, rod here to control the curve, the opening of the curve, and of course the little uh, anti-kick little things here, which it works great. So you just make that tight when your piece is coming through. It keeps the curve open. It goes by. And if there's a kickback, it just holds it. Uh, now, if you look at this, the way this is set up, let me uh, bring you in a little closer. All right. Got a little closer view here. Uh, got the camera and the lights around me so here is this where the piece goes through and then there's your curve opener it goes it keeps the curve open for you so you don't bind your wood that's one one of the things about kickback and then it goes the little claw thing which this is set too low. What you do is you bring it up just a little, and that's how you want it. it goes right by, and then there's a kickback. It just hang on. give me a second here. Just let it go down like that, and then you do it. There you go. Stupid me. That's what usually happens. I don't even know this is tight or not. Okay. Put like that. And there's a kickback that holds it on. Uh, the DeWalt machines are kind of weird. They're anti crack claw, paws, whatever you want to call them. There's something about them. As many videos as I watch with the DeWalt machines, this part back here, I don't know if they really do what they're supposed to. Uh, they are kind of uh, forward like this uh, for some reason. Let me see. They're forward like this, uh, some like this. They don't have. Uh, see if I can bring this down a little bit. Uh, here we go. Oh, I can't. Yeah, that's the problem. Uh, actually. Oh, I can see why he's doing it. Uh, okay. Uh, actually, there's very few machines that have them. And the ones I've seen, their anti-kickback claw here, it's, they, they're missing the, the ridges in the back, which is really what grabs the wood from coming at you. They have it going like this, and they think that if there's a kickback, that's going to hold it, and it's not. It, it, it will, that force is so, is so quick that it, it will go right through that. This is not going to do anything for them. If, if it's, th this is the way it really should be, where you have, just like that. So when it goes through, it, uh, it's going to grab, and that is still too high. I will go a little even lower. Make it go lower. Uh, right there. So when you go by like that, if it kicks back, you see how it grabs? That is going nowhere. So this is one of the uh, uh, the things that Craftman has. It's very safe for ripping. And again, this is just for ripping. I can't believe I see people cross-cutting with this arm down and they say it is for this, for guiding, for... I have no idea what they're saying. It is not. This is only for ripping. 
If you're going to cross cut, bring that baby up. Bring this guy up. Get it out of your way. Turn the machine around a little bit. There you go. And let me place the table where it's supposed to be. The table's supposed to be like around here somewhere. So if I was to put the fence You can see that it hits right there. There's no way that this blade can go forward. You can't do that unless you pick it up to go over the fence and you can drop it. After that, you just drop it. But once it goes to the back, uh, the blade is way back. Look how far away the blade is or would be from the fence. Some guys have this blade too close to the fence. If you just stick your hand in here, it will be very close to the fence. I see some of the videos and it's like goodness. And I don't know why they do that. They try to invent the wheel. There's a reason why the table sits like the way it is. And I will not change anything of the way the saw was actually made. Let me go back to the other camera. Okay. Looks like my uh, my battery is getting there, but here's another view when the uh, when the head is on the cross cut position, where if I wanted to go forward, I would be able to. That's the reason for this guard. The little dentation there is that reason where this will not come forward and still I see machines that have the guard as a safety and some of the guys are like <laughs> I, I, they built these things for the dust dust collection whatever that is I, I they take the safety away by building that and then this one is up on top of whatever they created and there's the safety of this guard. I mean, they're taking that away. To me, this is... Uh, how much battery got here? I'm going to have to change the battery. And I kind of give you my two cents about this guard. Okay, like I was saying about this uh, new improved Craftsman guard. I think it's the greatest, very safe uh, thing to have on your radial arm saw because it, uh, it, it really what it does is it keeps the blade or the head from coming at you which I have no idea why we'll do that but I can see guys uh, like to uh, dig into their uh, table. <laughs> I don't know why uh, but anyway and and with the uh, dust collection uh all this uh, enclosing the blade back there is like uh, uh to me i get very nervous i don't want anything around that blade while it's spinning and they have it enclosed in a box so i don't know what's in there but anyway this will keep it from coming at you right here so that's that was a, a great improvement and of course the other one was uh, I'll, I'll flip it around and I think I mentioned that already um, uh, 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 
Let me just bring this over. Flip this around a little. Yep, here it is. The uh, the front, the front that comes down for when you're ripping. I like that a lot compared to the other one, where uh, let me lock this up. You had to rotate the head. The claws in the back, I like it too. It's a little better than the one from before. And of course, the big improvement to me was the chute coming out when you're cutting is in the back, which that made a lot of sense. And of course, the guard itself, which is great for dummy people, I really People are not really thinking. They have no common sense while using this machine. And uh, that's why I want to make a series of uh, not only calibrating what you should do right from the start. And I'm going to show how I use these machines. I have three of them uh, in the front. And this one I usually use a lot as the back arbor. I do a lot of routing in the back. but. We'll get through that later, but this here is actually, uh, it, it serves two purposes. Um, it tells you where to feed, because you cannot feed this way. Really true. So, let me keep this one short. I figure I have to throw this guy in, the safety of, uh, of the guard, of the radio arm saw, the Craftsman, which I think is the safest one. I've seen the, uh, the Wolf's the deltas or whatever the other ones that they have and I, I don't see anything either close to this this is about the best thing that they did after that uh, problem that craftsmen had because of a lot of dumb people out there yeah and I'm thinking it's just common sense and that's what we're going to do with this series it's not anything we're going to go through the manual because it's important to go through the manual how to calibrate things but a lot of it is actually common sense and uh, and we seem to lack a lot of that uh, by watching some of the videos out there that they're very dangerous and I can't believe that they're still up and I see people telling these guys to take it down because any newcomers uh, are going to be learning the wrong thing and you should not be afraid of these machines you should respect them but not afraid and and if you don't calibrate it <laughs> you bet you better be afraid because it's gonna hit you yeah, it's gonna hurt you all right so let me close this up this happens to be the series and is the electronic one so thanks for watching